All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today I'm in this 2014 Audi SQ5, which is a car I've been meaning to film with for quite a while. I filmed a little while ago with the regular Q5, and I remember saying that it was the Goldilocks of the Audi SUV range. It's a good size, it's perfectly efficient, there's plenty of space for a family of five, there are plenty of engines to choose from, and if you go for a nice spec, it's very easy to live with. I remember thinking that the Q5 in general has a lot going for it. Well, the same is true of the SQ5, only this one has a proper engine, which provides proper performance. Bit of a tongue twister that, wasn't it? Proper engine, which provides proper performance. Let's look at the facts. 313 brake horsepower, 480 pound-foot of torque, 0 to 60 in around 5 seconds, a top speed limited to 155 miles an hour. They're impressive figures. On top of that, it comes with Audi's Quattro four-wheel drive system and an automatic gearbox. It ticks all the boxes. I think what we've got here is the perfect family car for a hothouse driver who suddenly finds themselves with child. The SQ5 was available in the UK from 2013 until 2016, Now that's four years after the regular Q5 arrived on the scene. The fact that this has an S before the model name means that it's the high performance model, which is understandable. But something that's not quite so understandable is the fact that it was only offered in the UK with a diesel engine. In fact, it was the first S model Audi ever offered with a diesel engine. I'm not knocking that by the way because this 3 litre bi-turbo diesel V6 does a fantastic job, but you'd have just thought that the high output model would have run on high octane. It's a superb engine this, I mean really, properly good. It just feels eager, feels like it wants to go all of the time. It doesn't really feel as though you're driving it, it almost feels like you're walking a giddy dog, like it's just pulling all the time. That is properly quick. It uses an 8-speed automatic gearbox which is excellent, it does a really good job. The changes are quick and seamless. I better slow down there. That's, that has honestly blown my mind. I'm in a diesel Audi SUV and I've just done, well, I can't tell you what I've done. It'd be irresponsible of me, but quite a high figure. That torque is impressive. It properly pins you into your seat. I think we'll knock it back into standard mode. Keep my license clean. In fact, no, we won't. Let me try that again. As they say in Yorkshire, YOLO. That is properly quick. I've just overtaken a Daihatsu Syrian, which, all right, is no big achievement. What a great car this is. I could seriously get used to this. This video today with all this snow about should look really cool. I shall try my best for you. The only downside, of course, with all this performance is that it makes you a more aggressive driver. There's nothing sedate or sedentary about it. From the moment you get behind the wheel of this car, your heart rate will rise slightly and you'll drive everywhere as though you're late to a meeting. It's just one of those cars. In other words, it turns you into an Audi driver. I was thinking just the other day, in fact, I should replace my rear view mirror with a photograph of an Audi grill because that's all I ever see when I look into it these days. What's weird about this car, I mean good weird, not bad weird, is that you can't really tell that it's a diesel. It never sounds like a clattery oil burner, even when it's cold. In fact, I'd go as far as to say it sounds pretty good. It reminds me a great deal of BMW's straight six turbo diesel engines, which is a compliment by the way. I love those motors. The interior of the SQ5 is very sporty too. You get a thick, chunky, flat bottom steering wheel. You get sportier seats. There are little reminders everywhere that you're in the fast model. You also get this nice contrast stitching. It's just a constant reminder that you're in something capable of 0 to 60 in five seconds. All the materials that they've used are high-end, everything feels really well built. I mean, don't forget this particular car that I'm in is 97,000 miles, and you'd never know. It all feels really, really solid. I said at the start that this would be the perfect car for a hot hatch owner that suddenly finds himself with a family. That's true. It still feels like a fun car to drive and be in. It never feels as though you're in a dreary SUV. It actually feels like you're in a big hatch. It's good fun to drive this. The performance is impressive, as is the MPG. It isn't silly to run. You'll fill the tank for about 90 pounds and that'll get you around 500 miles. In terms of UK Imperial MPG, then it'll average mid 30s on a long steady run and you should get mid 40 from it. So it shouldn't break the bank. And it's only 290 pounds a year to tax, although it is only Euro five, not Euro six. So it isn't ULES friendly. The ride is a little bit on the firm side, but it isn't as harsh as I was expecting. I was expecting this car to crash around without any give at all, but that isn't really the case. 
I hate driving a car with a harsh ride, I just haven't got any patience for it. But this doesn't offend me at all. All right, I mean, you won't ever think that you're in an S500, but it's perfectly comfortable. These seats are lovely, really nice and supportive. The steering's nice and light, so on the bright side, it's nice and easy to maneuver and park around town. But on the downside, you don't get much feel through it. It feels a bit numb. It isn't like driving an X3M Sport, for example. This only weighs 1,900 kilograms, and you can tell it doesn't feel big or heavy. The accelerator pedal is very sensitive, so it never feels sluggish. Like I said, it just feels eager. I mean, it's genuinely good fun to drive. Who'd have thought Audi could make a diesel SUV that would make you say that? I also think it's a good-looking car. I mean, I like the styling of the regular Q5. It doesn't look like a 2009 car. But with this, everything's that little bit better. The proportions are good, and it still looks modern. I think it's aged very well. As with all Audi S models, the styling differences are very subtle, and I like that. It isn't leery. It isn't one of those look-at-me, aggressive, shouty types. It isn't all good, though. There are a few things which would put me off. Firstly, the interior. As nicely finished as it is, it's all a bit old-fashioned now. For example, this screen here is tiny by modern standards, and the clarity isn't the best. There are too many buttons and switches, and the climate control is too fiddly to operate. You do get heated seats and Bluetooth, but there's no reverse camera as standard. And there's no start button. To start it, you have to push the key into this slot here. Honestly, I'm surprised it doesn't have a crank handle and a choke. This is a 2014 car, and everything just feels out of date. The gauges look old-fashioned, the screen looks old-fashioned, the buttons on the steering wheel look old-fashioned. Then again, it's based on a 2009 car, and we're in 2023, so I guess it's hardly surprising. It's 14-year-old technology. And that whole past-its-best interior is one thing which would put me off. The other thing is the image. Whenever I see an SQ5 out in the wild, they're always driven by somebody who used to have an S3, if you know what I mean. Somebody who thinks that a 3D reg plate's acceptable. I saw one of these yesterday at the petrol station, and straight away I spotted the 3D reg plate and the wind deflects on the windows. So, I knew everything about the owner before I'd even seen him. Sure enough, the chap emerged from the heavily tinted windows, and I spotted a hand tattoo and a Staffordshire Bull Terrier on the passenger seat. And I thought, well, that's not really a club I want to be a part of. If you can find a nice, original, unmolested example which hasn't been too pimped up, then I'd definitely say go for it. But most have been. Most have got heavy window tints, 3D reg plate, black wheels, the usual sort of garbage. And that would just put me off. The other thing which should put me off is the propensity to be stolen. It's a quick, practical car, so if you're a burglar or an armed robber, it's not hard to see the appeal. Still, I suppose get yourself a steering lock, a tracker, a rider post, and you should be fine. It has enough going for it, this car, that you can overlook those few issues. As a trial transportation device, then it's superb. It scored top marks at your end cap, it has Isofix seats and airbags everywhere. Thanks to its quattro four-wheel drive system, you'll have a bit more confidence when the weather turns arctic. If I were in a two-wheel drive car today, then I'd have that sinking feeling that I'm about to get stuck, but in this, I've got total confidence. I mean, it's probably best that I don't test it too much, it isn't a Land Rover Discovery, but it's probably perfectly adequate for most. What's more, the boot doesn't have a lip, so it's easy to get your stuff in and out of, and it offers 540 litres of space. It's also a very easy car to get in and out of, it's just the right height, and this SQ5 model sits 30 millimetres lower than the standard Q5. Like I said at the beginning, in my opinion, the Q5 is the Goldilocks of the Audi SUV range. But unlike the standard Q5, this SQ5 doesn't have a boring, bland, porridge-like engine. This one will put hairs on your chest. Use prices here in the UK start at around £15,000, but to find yourself a nice spec one with sensible mileage, you'll have to spend around £20,000. And that does sound like quite a lot of money, doesn't it, really, for something with an old interior? Still, overall, it's very impressive, and I don't think you'll feel short-changed. It'd make a great family car, this. I'd have one. In fact, it's whenever I drive this kind of car, I think... Probably something like my full-size Range Rover is a bit too much. In reality, something like this would be a better fit for me. If you're looking to buy one, then you need to make sure it's got full service history. They have a timing chain rather than a timing belt, so if it's had regular oil changes, then it should last for the lifetime of the car. You need to service the gearbox when it gets to about 80,000 miles. Don't let them tell you that it's sealed for life, because that's nonsense. Also, given the nature of the car, they can chew through tyres quite quickly, so make sure it's got a decent set of tyres with it. And on this kind of car, I wouldn't skimp on tyres. Go for a decent brand and they will last longer. Cheap tyres are just false economy. 
Well, I think that's about it. I've been really impressed with this SQ5. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you're interested in getting into the used car business, then check out my online course. I've created an online portal with nearly 100 videos which explain every single aspect of the used motor trade. From starting to funding to sourcing cars, repairing cars for sale, it's all there, so do check it out. And it's still free for the first 30 days and only £27 a month thereafter, and you can cancel at any time. So yeah, cheers guys, see you next time.